Welcome, Welcome to, to Kokum. Come along with us as we explore this fairy tale city on the Mosul River in Germany. Let's go. Flowing through the city is the serene Mosul River, providing a stunning backdrop to Kokum's quaint streets and vineyards. Stroll through Kokum's cobblestone lanes where half-timbered houses and vibrant flower boxes create a scene straight out of a storybook. but the crown jewel of Kokum is undoubtedly the magnificent Kokum Castle, towering high above the town. Climb to the castle for breathtaking views of the Mosul River, winding through the lush valley, and the charming town of Kokum spread out below. As night falls, the castle is illuminated, casting a magical glow over the city and creating an unforgettable sight. So we just had a really nice tour of this uh, castle, the Kokum Castle here on the Mosul River. And very interesting, the castle was originally built in the, around the year 1000. So uh, it's over a thousand years old and it functioned as a customs house. And basically as, as uh, people uh, brought goods up and down the Mosul River, which is just on the other side of the castle, uh, they would have to stop and pay taxes on their goods here. So it produced a lot of income for its owners and for the city of Kokum, I guess, there for a while. But then in the late 1600s, I think around 1692, uh, Louis XIV, the son king of France, he laid siege to this area, trying to claim um, the, um, the land for, for his kingdom, for France. And basically they destroyed the castle. It was pretty much 100% destroyed and laid in ruins for a couple hundred years. And then in the late 1800s, when uh, basically the Middle Ages were being romanticized and people liked the idea of castles and moats and knights and maidens and all that type of stuff, there was a rich businessman from Berlin who came here. He fell in love with the area and he wanted to buy the castle ruins. So he paid, he almost got it for free. I believe they said he paid less than a what would have been less than a thousand euros in, in today's money for the territory. Uh, but the catch was he had to rebuild it to its original specifications, at least from the outside. And the only thing they had to go on, there was a copper plate that was carved around uh, 1500 that showed what the, uh, what the castle looked like from the outside. So they took that copper plate from the 1500s, they rebuilt the castle. And so supposedly what you see today is, is pretty much what it originally looked like when it was built in um, you know, around uh, 1,000. So um, yeah, wealthy businessman built it, uh, rebuilt it. It looks great from the outside. Not all of the inside is refinished. There is a nice area that you can tour uh, that's been redone, and uh, but it is not completely to the Middle Ages. It's, it has a lot from the Renaissance period, Baroque period, and so on and so forth. He built it to what he liked, the guy who owned it. Uh, but yeah, the outside um, looks like looks original. So highly recommend when you're touring the Mosul, uh, come here to Kokum and tour the Kokum Castle. I think it was eight euros per person. Right, cake and coffee time. So we have some coffee, obviously, and we have some Black Forest cake, Schwarz Schwarzwald Kirschtorte, uh, cappuccino, and we have a uh, spaghetti ice, which is ice cream that's pressed through a, a thing to make it look stringy, and then they pour cherry sauce on it, and uh, a little bit of something that looks like cheese, so it looks like plate of spaghetti but it's ice cream it's very good it's a specialty here and so black forest cake the Kirschwald the Schwarzwald Kirschtorte is one of my favorite cakes I love it so can't wait to get our cake and coffee on so I have a delicious black forest cake Schwarzwald Kirschtorte black forest cherry torte it's so delicious and my uh, we used to live next to this family and our our neighbor Sonia made the, ble the best uh, Black Forest cake, the best Schwarzwald Kirschtorte in the world. So Sonia, if you're watching, I really miss your cake. But uh, this is a, uh, um, a pretty good substitute here in Kokum. Mm. The creamy layers and the chocolate cake. And then it has like some, some sort of a cherry 
liqueur cooked inside it. It's really good. And then I'm going to try a little bit of this um, spaghetti ice. Mm. Mm. Oh wow, that's really, really delicious. They take them. If you can see the ice cream, I don't know if you can see that very well, but it's um, it's pressed through like a, I don't know, a potato masher or something. That make, it comes out and it looks stringy, like uh, pasta. So the idea is for it to look like a plate of spaghetti, but it's quite tasty ice cream treat, especially on a warm day. It's very delicious. Mm -mm. Mm, that's good. So we just visited a castle in Kochum that uh, has that was destroyed and rebuilt and now we're going to visit a castle that is um, about as old about the same age as the one that was originally built in Kochum but this one has never been destroyed uh, Burg Elts or Castle Elts here um, not too far from Kochum I believe we're about I don't know 20 kilometers or so uh, we drove down and the parking lot and so to get to this castle you have to take a nice little walk through the forest it's about um, it's supposed to take about 15 minutes to get there or you can take a shuttle if you don't feel like walking but uh, it's a nice day and the path is nicely shaded so we opted to get a little bit of exercise and go for the walk so here we are on our way to Berg Elts and um, yeah, we'll show you what it looks like when we get there. So we just visited uh, Burg Elts, uh, Castle Elts, which is right behind me. Um, a very impressive structure uh, built around um, 1000, uh, originally built by the Elts family, which had three uh, branches, I guess. And then ultimately it came down to one of the Elts, one of the lines of the Elts family, and they still own it today. The uh, history, uh, it's never been destroyed, so it's pretty much the same castle here as what was built um, a thousand years ago. Um, it did it was sieged one time for five years and then it had to do some diplomacy um, to keep uh, to not from be being completely taken over uh, during the 30 years war again diplomacy to keep from being destroyed so there's a lot of diplomacy involved to keep it from being destroyed uh, so yeah so it's lasted all this time uh, inside it's it's pretty pretty uh, interesting as well they have a um, like a treasury uh, chamber and you can go tour that with some weapons and some some finery some jewels and uh, some armor and then you can take a tour inside the facility and uh, it lasts about 30 to 40 minutes I guess pretty interesting uh, um, it tells you some history of the of the castle and points out some some things of interest so um, yeah it was pretty cool so if you're in uh, the Mosul area um, of Western Germany definitely should stop by and see Berg Elts. It's uh, probably one of the n nicer castles uh, around. And I think really what makes it interesting is the fact that unlike most of the other castles, this one has never been destroyed. So it's actually what you see is is how it was built. You know, I think 850 years ago. And and the same family. Uh, the, the person who owns it now can trace their lineage back uh, to the original builder. So that's pretty cool as well that the uh, original family still still owns it, still lives here. So that that's that's pretty cool. So yeah, um, come in, Berg Elts, not far from Kokum. It did take us maybe 30 minutes to drive here. And uh, yeah, take a tour. All right, thanks for joining us. Uh, we visited the two great castles today um, along the Mosul River, Burg Elts here, and uh, Kokum Castle, which is um, uh, basically in the city of Kokum, not far from here, 30 minute drive or so. Uh, both of them are beautiful. Uh, this one has never been destroyed. So this one is, real ori is still original. It's in the same family. Uh, the other one has been destroyed and is, but has been rebuilt to to uh, to the original standards on the on the outside um this one burg Elts, 
there's not much else around except the beautiful forest. So if you'd like to come for a nice hike, uh, get some fresh air, you could uh, you know pack a picnic and it's a nice day. Just walking along here, we've got some nice streams. It's very beautiful. Kochum is basically, that castle is basically in the city itself. So if you visit the town of Kochum, which is very nice, it's a very nice medieval town and then go to the castle. So, you know, two different experiences, I guess, for two different medieval castles, but they're both fantastic and they both deserve a visit when you're in Germany. And Rhineland Falls, I tell you, is probably the most underappreciated region in Germany. It has some great, some fantastic stuff to visit here. So if you're planning your trip to Germany, try to come to Rhineland Falls, visit the Rhine River, the Mosel River. We got some beautiful castles, some beautiful medieval half-timbered villages, some Roman history, um, some great food as well. So we've got it all. So come visit Rhineland Falls and visit some great castles. All right, thanks for joining us on this great day trip to visit two great castles in Rhineland Falls. Please be sure to hit that like button, uh, subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any of our further uh, adventures. Leave a comment, let us know what you thought and let us know what your favorite castle is in Europe.